iron in the soul. What's up, YouTube? This is Iron and Soul. Back today with another video. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment, let me know what you think about my content. Let's talk about today the prophet Daniel and just how we can really be inspired by his life and someone who was truly favored of God. The scripture makes it clear that he was highly favored of God, so much so that the angel Gabriel was sent to him directly to give him a message. So he had to be a very powerful individual to be visited by an angel and given messages. Let's talk about his name. Daniel's name in the Hebrew means God is my judge. In an ancient Hebrew text, the prophet was a mediator between God and men. And that's so true even today. I do consider myself a prophet as opposed to a pastor. I've told you guys that before. I'll say it again. There is a difference. And so I do have a prophet spirit and, and I'll go into more detail about what a prophet really is in future videos. He was trained to be a statesman in the heathen court. He is called a prophet in the New Testament in Matthew 24 and verse 15. And so no parts of the Old Testament were written past 400 BC. So we have what was referred to as the 400 silent years. We can learn much from the Hebrew prophet Daniel. If you think about his life, his life shows the providential guidance of God or divine providence. That's when you are divinely guided throughout your life, your journey with God's hand. And as I look back on my life, I can't figure out how I made it apart from the grace of God. There, there was no way that I could have got to where I am in life and the various worlds I went to and rooms I was invited into, the people I met, the organizations that I worked for, um, being able to work in both black and white communities, coming from an all black community, going to all white community and then going back to a black community, and just even what I'm doing now on Loud Iron and Soul, there has been this invisible hand guide me throughout my life. And it's so clear to me that that's the truth. And that's what it means to experience the providential guidance of God. Miracles, miraculous interventions. There are so many miracles that happen in the life of Daniel. The God of heaven controls the forces of nature, the history of nations, and the lives of the Hebrews who were in captive at this time. You think about Daniel's appearance. Appearance is very important. Man does just outward appearance. And so there are a number of words that are used to explain his disposition based on Daniel 1 and verse 4. No blemish, which means there was no physical defect. He was healthy. He was in good shape. Well favored means he was good looking. So you had this handsome man, young man, who was good looking in good shape. He was also cunning in knowledge and understanding science, which simply means he was smart. He was intelligent. So he was well-spoken. He had to be to serve in the king's court. And he had the ability to stand in the king's court. In other words, Daniel knew how to follow leadership. And if you want to go forward in life, it is important that you learn how to follow those who are over you. Everything stands and falls upon leadership. And so this is what they teach even in the military. In order to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower first. How I learned to be a leader was by following, by having respect for my superiors, understanding there was something called rank. This is a superior. I'm not at his level. I'm not at his rank. So let me learn from this person. And that's how they do it in the military. And I've learned that even in my own life, you grow by being trained, by being informed by those who may be wiser and uh, more advanced than you are. He was trained over the course of three years. And some of you guys now even in college, and I want to encourage you guys who are students who are either in college or trade school or taking courses online. You're, you, you're training for some type of um, endeavor for your work and career. And so it's so important that you take time to learn. Learning is, is essential um, when you're trying to create a path for yourself in life. And so spend time in reading, spend time in reflection. And then you, over the course of three years, was educated in their culture, he was educated and understood in their science and knowledge in all areas that were involved with the Babylonian Empire at that time. So he was well trained, he was groomed and nourished for three years in order to be elite and a wise man in the king's court. He had to experience a change of name, and, and that's significant as well. Um, a change of name often in the Old Testament was a change in identity and who you were. 
And so when you lose your culture, and this is even with African-Americans, losing our culture, some of us, we don't know which tribe we came from. We don't really know our true origins of our history. And so when your name is changed, that changes your identity. And you think about the Hebrews at this point, their names were changed for the simple reason that their Hebrew names will sound strange to the Babylonians. Now, I think that was an excuse. What I think really, it really was is that this was done to break the spirits of these Hebrew captives. See, when you find yourself captive in another land, not your homeland, the people over you will do many things to break your spirit. And this happened often with the Egyptians who were over the Hebrews. The Hebrews were in bondage for 400 years. Very similar to the um, 400 years the African Americans have been in America. And just the cruelty sometimes we endure, the humiliation, the embarrassment, um, the unofficial at times second class citizenship. There seems to be a strange parallel between the ancient Hebrews and the experience of the African in America. And so when you think about this narrative, our names have been changed. You know, I think about my name. That's not an African name. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that has indirectly to a degree changed my identity. And we see lots of Africans in America right now scrambling, searching, researching, reading. As I'm reading right now, I'm reading a book very diligently right now in my own private time, trying to get to the origins of my identity and what's actually going on. You see, there's something about knowledge. Knowledge is power. And so in this case, the exact same thing happened when Daniel's name was changed to Belshazzar, which means Bel or Babylonian chief god. Why would you change a Hebrew godly man's name to that of a false god? That's easy to change the identity, to try to break the spirit. And this is the work of Satan and demons and demonic people. Their objective and goals are to break your spirit. There are people in your life right now, brother, who are there to break your spirit, to confuse you, to make you feel less than, to work on you, to, um, I hate to quote Umar Johnson, but to massage your mind, to massage you and to make you feel like you're something that you're not. And that is a true act of spiritual warfare. And this is why I did that talk on mind control, because mind control is very serious. And mind control often happens, I'm going to repeat myself, through music, through movies, and through media. The, those talking hits, okay? Those talking hits that will confuse you, that will have you hating those who are good, and also... You know, despising those who are, I mean, basically praising those who are evil and despising those who are good. In other words, things will be backwards. And so this is something that we see happen with Daniel in the, in the text and how he was able to overcome that because of the grace of God upon his life. Daniel was also someone who was very disciplined in his diet. Not only was he well-groomed, good-looking, intelligent, educated, godly, he was someone who was disciplined in what he ate. Daniel was willing to have just beans and water. And when he ate this food, he ended up looking better than the other young men who had a full course meal. Because I believe God honored his commitment to um, not eat foods that were forbidden to the Mosaic law. And so Daniel made a decision to uh, honor God and to not eat those foods that were forbidden by the Mosaic law. And because he did that, he didn't lose any weight, right? He did not get weaker. But they got stronger and actually looked better, according to the text, than the other young men in the palace. So the lesson here is this. Don't defile ourselves with the things of this world. Let me, let me park right here for a second. We cannot defile ourselves with the things of this world. Let me park here for a second, guys. I know you guys, some of you guys don't like this. Guys, you got to put down the alcohol. You got to put down those blunts. I know, oh, you say, okay, all right, there you go. No, 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 no. Let me talk to you, man. Don't, don't, don't get mad. Don't run. Let me talk to you. You got to put them blunts down, brother. You got to stop drinking all the time. You have to stop eating bad food. You can't defile yourself. Be careful what you're looking at on your phone. You had to preserve or to retain your seat. You had to be disciplined, man. And so if you want to be like Daniel, if you want to be a great um, man like this great Hebrew young man was, you have to have discipline, okay? Discipline in terms of what you eat, um, exercise, you know, mental discipline, reading, right? Reflecting, prayer. Um, Daniel was someone who would fast from time to time. He was celibate for a season, and I believe most of us should do that as well. 
um, depending on your, your, your status in life, whether you're single or married. But if you are a single person, I do believe that we should follow the path of Daniel, and that is to be celibate so that you can retain your life force and to be a strong, confident, wise, clear thinking man. And so Daniel did all these things. And that's something we can use as an example. Clarity of thought. He was learning. He was a leader. He was working in a good position. He had a quality job. He, he was well-groomed. He was in good shape. I can imagine he had white teeth. Okay. He was eating just beans and drinking water. I'm, I'm sure he didn't have messed up teeth. Okay. Clear eyes, bright eyes, being visited by angels. I mean, he was just a very powerful young man. You know, and I can't think really of, of really... Another better example in the Bible, to be honest, of a godly young man. I mean, you have many. You have David. You have Daniel. You have, you know, Samson. There's so many examples. But Daniel was like, man, at the top. I mean, he just set the bar high. <laughs> okay. Being visited by angels, talking to God, serving in the kingdom. You know what I mean? Working, uh, working as a president in Babylon, high quality job, dressing well, talking well, acting well, praying three times a day. Then you had it going on, you know what I mean? And, and, and this is the type of life we should aspire to if we want to honor the Most High. Daniel and his life and testimony was so powerful that according to Daniel 1, 18 through 20, he was 10 times better than the other men in the king's palace. Daniel, he lived to see the release of the Hebrew captives, which took place in the first year of Cyrus. Daniel lived on three years into Cyrus' reign which would have been around 70 years after the Hebrews were taken captive. So that means this, then you live to about 85, 90 years of age. And the, the entire time he honored God, he continued to be promoted. He continued to pray, to fast, to write Holy Scripture. He was a man on a mission. And so I hope you are inspired as we take a brief look at the life of the Hebrew prophet Daniel. I hope you enjoyed that message. I hope it was a word of wisdom for you an inspiration on your journey of discovering your masculinity or to uh, learn how to be more masculine, to learn how to be a leader, your journey of self-development, your journey of self-care, your journey of just manhood in terms of, you know, being a priest, provider, protector. So I trust that his life can be one of great inspiration. This is your brother, Iron Soul. Thanks for listening to this talk. God bless. Peace.